Hello there, everybody. I'm Ross Pitt, Shark Hunter. Welcoming you to Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour. With me today, as always, is my co-host, Wizzy Puff. It's true. It's Wizzy. Now, Wizzy, uh, what do we plan on doing today? Um, I believe we're starting Gen 5 month. Ah, uh, yes, Wizzy. We're going to be starting Gen 5 today. Uh, but before we do, I want to take a minute of your time to test you, or, yeah, I guess test you is the right word, I guess, on our characters of Gen 5. Let's see if you get, let's, uh, I'm gonna post it, po uh, I'm gonna post these pics in the Discord chat. And you're going to tell me who these characters are. All right, now, let's I do don't this. believe, maybe you know some, maybe you don't, who knows. Um, but do describe what these characters look like for our dearest listening audience. <sighs> that is Bubblegum Sunrise. Great. Now, what did she look like? That was that was that was an important thing that I just asked for you to do. Now, what does she look like? She has pink hair and orange skin. And she has, like, a blue saddlebag. Okay, okay. I mean, I wouldn't say that's her skin, but all right, all right. Well, it's hard for me to say that it's hair when it's as smooth it's as smooth as plastic. The irony is that it's really not that smooth. <clears throat> Let me look at this. Let me look at this. That has shine on it. That has, like... A nice smooth shine on it. I mean, look at the feet, though. Yeah, but I mean, that's not really like not smoothness. It's just fading it's into far. a different color. No, but in the movie, when you get it like a close up and whatever, they, it does like look more detailed. I'll have to take your word on it. Well, it's true. Anyways, what was your guess? Uh, my guess for her name? Yes. Is Bubblegum Sunrise. Right. Bubblegum Sunrise. And that is close. <gasps> uh, it is actually Sunny Star Scout. Oh. Sunny Star so, Scout? She's a scout for the Sunny Stars? Uh, you got like half of a word in there. So, you know, I'm calling that close. <laughs> All right. Our next character. Posting it in here. Please describe this character and then tell me what you think her name is. Well, she's a unicorn with blue hair and purple fur skin. You know, fur. I like calling it skin. I don't like you calling it skin. Well, then maybe they should make the toys furrier. <laughs> <laughs> then what if your problem is the toys, then just call it plastic. Okay, I'll call it plastic. Great. Now then, what is this character's name? Um, passion fruit, um, agave horn, I don't know. My name is passion fruit agave. Passion fruit agave, that's a, an interesting one. Uh, unfortunately, no, you are wrong. It is actually Izzy Moonbow. Oh, I should have guessed moon something, because the other one was sunny. Yeah, that's interesting. They both have space names. Maybe they're going to become the new uh, Celestia and Luna. All right, last one for now, and then maybe we'll wait a bit and do more. Describe this character's appearance, and then guess his name. Ooh, um, uh, he has, like, um, there's a specific, a specific shade of blue hair, and he got the uh, orange fur hair again. A bit more yellow, I would say, but yeah. Um, what would you say his name is? His name is Starburn. Um, S Starburn Mick Ocean. Uh, nearly one hundred percent correct. Unfortunately, you're only fifty percent correct. It is Starburn Island. No, that's not true at all. Actually, um, it <laughs> is Hitch Trailblazer. Oh, I think I actually heard that name. You have probably also heard Sunny Star Scout and Izzy Moonbow before, because I 
I have talked to you about these characters. Oh, you just frick. don't listen. I don't you listen, never apparently. You listen. This was the test. And you have failed. It was like years ago, Ross. Come on. All right, now then. We will get back to that idea later. But for now. All right, so this first one, sadly not a lot of talking, but it's pretty short, so oh. I'm going to say fuck it. Is you want to read it? You can. <clears throat> is this a comedy? Uh, no, I couldn't really find many comedies. Although the next one is a comedy, I believe. So is this one but not this going one is by the... Uh, I don't think it's going to be very sad or anything. This one not going by the... um comedy drama thing uh yeah okay <clears throat> this story is called this is how a unicorn thinks by casket base 77 chapter one maximum worry the beads on the ceiling spinner on the ceiling spinner went round and round like ceiling fan i don't know what a ceiling um, spinner is it's complicated Maybe I'll show you the video uh, later. Okay. Always moving, but never getting anywhere. Izzy stared upwards from the couch, anxiously drumming her forehooves on the floor. Then she shifted position to anxiously drum her hinds instead. Some pony was breathing heavy through their nose, and because she lived alone, Izzy concluded the nose breather was her. The job she had to do was simple. Only little ponies felt afraid to do simple stuff, and Izzy wasn't little. Right? Right? Well, she hadn't measured herself in a while. Nor stood next to another unicorn to compare. Not since... Gee, not since she was still young enough to know for a fact how little she was. So much for simple stuff. A tea kettle whistled from the other room, loud enough to make thoughts seem quiet in comparison. Izzy bolted to the kitchen and was soon examining her stash of divvy bags. There were many. Too many. She was only one pony with one kettle. Chamomile flavor? No, that's for bedtime, not going out time. Lemon? No, Izzy didn't need sour on top of stress. She chose one with no label. Uncertainty can be fun sometimes, right? Right? Horn into the bag, bag into the mug. The label lacking tea sat stewing and so did Izzy. Just popping in for a mail call, anything cool coming down the pipe hard water? Stop coming in here, Isabel. If any letter is addressed to you, it's placed in your drop box at the end of your property. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I was free today, and this was the closest building to where I live, so, uh, you know, I just figured I'd check out what everyone else is up to. Maybe chit-chat with the local plugged-in postmaster pony? There's a bulletin board out front, with all the planned town events for the next month on it. Yeah, I saw that. It's blank and no one was nearby, so... If it's blank, then there are no planned town events for the next month. Oh. I don't see any saddlebags on you, Isabel. Can I assume you don't have any goods you want to drop off? Um, I don't. And you aren't here to buy another ad space on the back of the local paper. Well, I... Guess I'd need money to do that, right? And seeing as none of my crafts from the last ad got any buyers... Are you here for any real reason? Do I... Do I need a real reason to just make small talk? Yes, you do. Ah. Goodbye, Isabel. Right, right. Sorry. Goodbye, I guess. Last week's exchange at the post office hadn't gone at all like Izzy wanted. Never mind that it ended up being the longest conversation she'd had in months. The other unicorns didn't like her. Izzy was mature enough to admit that. But they didn't seem to like most, most things. It says most twice. Izzy liked most things. She liked the way the rain sounded and the sun felt. She liked the music that came out of glass bottles when she blew on them just right. She liked forging the forest floor for the straightest sticks to make more crafts because maybe... Just maybe, she'd eventually make something that would get a reaction from another pony. Some days her searches found more than just sticks. A certain search this morning had found a lot more than just sticks, for better or worse. Horn in the mug, bag out of the mug, bag into the trash can, with a couple open and shuts on the lid. 
not for any reason other than to fill the house with a few seconds of sound. Yes, Izzy did like most things, but quiet wasn't one of them. In fact, I hate quiet. Izzy buried her shameful muzzle into her bag, into her mug, pretending as hard as she could that those awful, nasty words didn't just come out of her. She <laughs> shivered, which was odd because she didn't feel cold at all. Izzy was not a bad pony. The other unicorns didn't like her, but that didn't make her a bad pony, right? She hated a thing, but that didn't make her a bad pony, right? Right? Wrong. Are you saying that Izzy's a bad pony? No, Izzy's a good pony. She's yeah. the best pony of the new series. That That's what I thought. Fact, she is the best. Izzy sipped her tea, then she gulped it. Isabel Moonbow chugged and chugged her mug until there was nothing left in it. The mystery dippy bag had definitely had a taste, but Izzy didn't recognize it. If she had a friend with their own cup, maybe they could have told her what the taste was. They'd swig from their own drink, share jokes as well as tea, point to the home decor all around, and compliment all the hard work Izzy clearly put into making her house feel like a home. But God, the other unicorns sound like they're just jerks. Well, they kind of are. No wonder they banned unicorns. Oh, here. But Izzy's house didn't feel like a home, and she didn't have any pony to share her afternoon with. Izzy had her empty mailbox in the quiet, and too many tea bags in the quiet, and a ceiling spinner whose beads never went anywhere, and that lantern from the woods yesterday, and the note that was attached to it, and the quiet. Well, Izzy had lots of things, but she didn't have any friends, not in Bridalwood. Though with the lantern. Yeah, I was going to explain the unicorn thing, um, but then my cat wanted out. So I let him oh. out, and then I was going to come back and explain it, but then you were already on this. Uh, you can explain uh, the this. unicorn thing if you'd like. Well, no, it's not the proper time. Okay. Though if the lantern note was telling the truth, she had friends in Maritime Bay. Izzy rinsed her mug out in the sink. Where was Maritime Bay? Absolutely no clue. Izzy dried her mug with a towel she'd crocheted herself. How many friends did she have there? No clue there either. Izzy put away her cup and stepped back, seeing how spotless the kitchen was, like no pony lived there. Izzy ate and slept, but did she really live? Izzy was tired of having no answer to her own unspoken questions all the time. It twisted her tea-filled stomach into knots, the thought of going out to search for the lantern's origin all by herself. But even worse was th the thought of staying there, in this cottage all by herself, possibly forever. The slam of plywood on drywood told Izzy <laughs> <laughs> she'd left her house and was trudging out of Bridalwood Forest. She blinked at the sunlight before noticing the quiet all around was being filled with the eager thumps of her own hoofsteps. Hoofsteps. I tried to say hoofsteps, but mm, I, I may have messed that up. Well, what happens happens. Then her rhythm sped up as the trees thinned. Across the open plains, Izzy was galloping for all she was worth. Legs pumping like pistons as her uncombed mane trailed behind. She wasn't a bead on a ceiling spinner or an ignored ad in a newspaper. She was Izzy Moonbow, the grinning, laughing, hopeful unicorn. And she had friends in Maritime Bay. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, that's so nice. So, that was This Is How a Unicorn Thinks by Basket Case 77. Or Casket Base 77, deepest apologies. I was so proud of myself for getting that right earlier. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was supposed to be a uh, basket case. It's supposed to be the sound like basket case. Yeah. Sounds like a skeleton owns this account, you know? Casket base. Yeah. You're right. Anyways, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It feels like um, it would have been a scene from the movie. And um, I haven't seen the movie, so it could have been for all I know. Awesome. Well, it was. It was actually taken directly from the movie. <clears throat> That's what I thought. Uh, they just literally took the script from the movie and shoved it into there. No, but it does lead into the movie. And, like... Okay. So, there's this lantern sent out by um, Sunny, and I, I haven't seen the movie in, like, a minute. Like, a month, but I, you know, I can't really remember all the details. But, um, but yeah, I believe Sunny sends a lantern to, like, the unicorn... The unicorn places and whatever, wherever that's called. 
and uh, Izzy finds it and she's like, all right, I'll go check this place out. Uh, and she's adorable and I love Izzy. And she comes <laughs> in and she's like, hey, everybody, I'm Izzy. I'm like the cutest thing you've ever seen. Um, she loves everything. So yeah. And so that's relatable, you know? Yeah. That's Izzy for you. All right, Wizzy, are you ready? Unless you had any other any other thoughts on this? Um, I thought it was really cute, and uh, it made me happy. Good. I'm also happy. Are you ready, though, Wizzy? For the next questions. Oh, uh, man. Gonna... I'm ready. All right. I'm going to send you three more ponies in this last three because there aren't that many characters actually there are i probably could have sent you more but i don't actually know all their names um so i'm going to send you this one see if you can name that and also uh, describe her please oh well she got those she got she got some nice wings she got purple tipped wings purple tipped white wings uh, a big old white body, some pink eyebrows, and pink and green hair. Very good. Um, and her name is Mixed Berry Pompadour. Alas, it is Mixed Berry Pompadour. That was a terrible I knew name. It. Um, no, it is actually Zip Storm. Or should I say Princess Zip Storm? Oh, she's a princess. Yes, she is. I forgot she's um, our princess. She really fought hard to be my favorite character, uh, but unfortunately, that still goes to Izzy because Izzy is adorable and I love her, and she's played by Kamiko Glenn. Oh, she is. Yes. Oh yeah, I think I uh, remember that. Oh man, Kamiko Glenn's great. Yeah. Um. So Zip and Hitch Trailblazer up here, a surprising ship. I didn't expect to ship these two, but I am now shipping these two after seeing the movie. Uh, is I... Zip a villain? No. Hmm. She gives that villain stare. Oh, well, then. All right. Uh, next uh, thingy. Whatever it's called. Pony. You know thing. Pony. That's the one. Oh, this one looks a lot like Izzy. Uh, she got purple hair and a pink body. And uh, she got pink wings because she's like Izzy, except she's a... Uh, Pegasus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now an, tell me, what is she holding in her hand? An iPhone. Exactly. And also her wings are really fluffy. And she has like a uh, I think she has like a golden thing around her head, like a um whatever the Wonder Woman has. Uh, and golden hooves? I haven't seen golden hooves. Uh I wouldn't say so much golden as they are like, you know, horseshoes. Hmm. Golden horseshoes? Yeah, I would, pro I would say it's probably that, because look, it, there's a little crease on her hoof. Well, Makes me think that it's going into something. Um, Never actually paid that much attention. Her name is Technobabble, Princess Technobabble. You know what? That would have been a much better name, Um, so I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> What's her name? It is Princess Pip Petals. I knew she was a princess. Yeah, you did. They're, uh, her and uh, Zip Storm up here are uh, sisters. Mm. Uh, Zip Storm is the heir to the throne, so that's cool. Um, yeah, she looks like Pip that. will never become queen, so. But she doesn't want to because she's too busy on her phone. Yeah, no, she's a um, she's a social media star. I knew it. I knew it. All right, so we have one final one. This is the last one of the day, so eat this up, folks. You guys better appreciate this. Everything I'm doing for you. It's the one. It's the Sheriff. Sheriff it's Silverstar. Neo. He's the, he's red and he has blonde hair. And his name is Sheriff Silverstar. Um, no, that is a different character from a different show. Yeah. So no. Um this is actually Deputy Sprout, and yes, he does become sheriff because Hitch Trailblazer kind of dips out to find uh, what's her name and the other one. I knew it. He's the sheriff. Yep. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that is Sprout, played by Ken Jong. 
Now, I had an idea oh. to uh, we just can name play. all of the actors with them, but I forgot to list those down, so I only remember Kamiko Glenn and Ken Jong. I remember Ken Jong's name, but I don't remember anyone that he plays. He is in Community. Oh, yeah, that's him! Yep. Um, a character I thought was going to be kind of annoying, but I did not find him annoying. Well, not that annoying. Not like annoying to the point where point where I was annoyed. Uh, anyways, yeah, he's the villain of the movie. Yeah, I remember that. All right, so that was Can Wizzy Guess the Names of These Characters? Tune in next time to see if he can guess the same names of the characters and not completely forget them. What? <laughs> All right, so this next one is called When Magic Returns by Let's Do This. Oh, Let's Do This. I remember that name. I don't remember that name. Um, of Twilight's in this one. It um, would appear so. You want to do Twilight and I do Sunny Star Scout? Uh, sure. All right. When Magic Returns, Chapter 1. When Magic Returns. When Magic Returns. <laughs> they had been asked to gather the Thunderstream airship station beneath Zephyr Heights in its grand departure hall before the elegant stained glass doors leading out to the landing platform. Asked, that was the word. She disliked the word summoned, saying it wasn't just wasn't her way. They stood together, the three of them, a Pegasus princess, a unicorn artisan, and an earth pony research student. They looked at each other uncertainly, even though they had been friends for as long as they could remember, because they were also her friends, and she had been increasingly distant of late. Before them, the doors swung open, and she strode in, tall, confident, wearing her gilded crown, patrol, and armored shoes, her flowing mane and tail wafting in the call of ethereal forces she alone sensed. What the heck, the princess of Equestria walked up to them, alone and without guard or escort, and bowed to them. Thank y'all for coming out and have visited each of you individually. Uh, rather than make you travel here, but time is short, and this is a thing which w must be done together. Her horn blazed, and her magic brought forth a blue leather carryall with her double star cutie mark embossed on it. From it, she... Wait, double star cutie mark? Is that Twilight's cutie mark? Pretty much. Huh. I never really paid attention to her cutie mark. Hold on, let me just look up Twilight's cutie mark. You mean go to the files that you have downloaded? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, sure. Ish. But really, it's more of six different stars or so. Six mm. or so different stars. All crowded around. From it, she brought forth the friendship gem, symbol of her rule and all she stood for. Three separate crystals bound into a single setting. A winged circle of emerald, a spearhead horned of blue sapphire, and a lens-like core of clear diamond. That would make rarity jealous. Ugh. She held it briefly in her magic, staring at it sadly. It had already faded. Its magic drained away. It was little more than decorative artwork now. Oh, rarity really wants that now. Without further word, she placed it on the ground before her. Before her friends, with a firm press of an armored hook of forehoof, she broke the gem's setting splitting it into its three constituent parts, which she then presented one to each of them as she glared as they stared at her in open-mouthed shock. Ah, uh, I get it now. Okay, okay, this makes sense. I'm pretty sure this is in the past. Oh. Or maybe it's not in that stupid. But basically, in the movie, there are like these three gems that they all need to gather up and bring together to get the magic back, you know? Hmm. And in the end, spoilers for the movie, uh, they break, and they don't get back together. And then they realize that it was the th the, the friendship all along. <laughs> oh, what a classic end. Yeah. I hope you see the movie someday. I might. Uh, let's uh, let's get a Patreon goal. Uh, one person subscribing to our patron. Pa Patreon and uh, Wizzy will make a reaction to the movie. Wizzy will do it. Yeah. All so right. y'all best be hoping for that Patreon soon. 
so that I can actually care about continuing this podcast. I'm kidding. I love doing this, maybe. I believe this is you. Oh, I need to give these back to you. She said. Because it's going to be up to you now to remember and pass down what you've learned to the generations to follow, to continue on where I can no longer can, to keep alive the spark of friendship in hopes that one day, maybe, it will find those in whom it can burn brightly once more, yada, yada, yada. She bowed to them again, then turned and strode away. All right, bye. Wait! The Earth Pony called. How will we know who to give these to? Or when? She paused, looking back and smiled. You will know, she said. Her voice was already insubstantial. That's why it had no quotation marks. Like the wind itself, Uh. she was fading away, even as they watched. When the magic returns, you will light the way. Her smile faded somewhat. But you yourselves will not see it. And then she was gone. The three of them looked at each other. She's (laughs) gone! At the gemstones held in their hooves, they had already begun to forget what they had gathered there, why they had gathered there. But they nodded to each other. They were still friends, and they would do what they had to do. They trotted out into the platform. (laughs) What? Ross. What? Oh. How, do you think the, how do you think the magic of friendship left? <laughs> <laughs> they trotted out onto the platform, looked up at the sky. It looked perfectly normal now, clear and blue and dotted with a few clouds, with a warm sun shining overhead. Nothing unusual or strange about it, not in the least. That was what made it so terrifying. Many, many moons later, Sunny Star Scout sighed, staring up at the ruins of her home. The lighthouse tower had been sheared off and lay in a shattered ruin on the downslope of the promontory. The front door frame of the house was warped, the door immobile, and just looking through the fractured ground floor windows, Sonny could see shattered stone and plaster and dust everywhere inside, just like on the lawn outside. What happened? It was good to take a lot of... Oh, well, you see. (laughs) So Sprout had a bit of a power go to his head, and he was all like, I'm gonna kill everyone (laughs) who isn't an earth pony and so he made this giant robot and they were all and he was trying to stop the people who were trying to get friendship back um so he tried to kill them and bring the uh the place down the uh, lighthouse home down and he did and then they found the magic friendship yeah, some people just can't handle power, man. But we can't yeah, no, he blame can. him. I blame his mother. <laughs> it was going to take a lot of work putting this place back together. But at least she had friends to help. Hitch and the other ponies had headed up to the coast to, to Maritime Bay's city center to gather Hitch other, and the other ponies, ponies, whatever their names are, to gather other ponies and supplies to help her, leaving Sunny alone at her request with her thoughts, plus her new wings and horn. Oh, she's an she's a <laughs> yeah, that's she's an thing. alicorn. I about that, like legitimately, I did not remember that. <laughs> yeah, she gets uh, wings and a horn. I don't know if it's going to be permanent though. Oh, um, I'm hoping it's not, at least for now. But I wouldn't be surprised if there, if like the magic of friendship and the friendship god who resides in a tree, but probably not anymore. Because that tree blew up in season nine. Uh, I think that that friendship god is going to be like, nope, screw it. These guys can't live without this shit. So there's a unicorn for you. (laughs) And that's how uh, Equestria was made. Sunny flapped the glimmering ethereal wings experimentally. She peered up at the gleaming insubstantial horn on her forehead. This is going to take some getting used to, she thought. It was scary, but also kind of exciting, like it always was. Anytime Sunny set out to learn anything new, first you knew nothing at all, and had no idea where to start, and it was all just completely overwhelming. Then you learned just enough to have a sense of what was what, and also how little you still knew. Just enough to be dangerous, Dad would say, with that whimsical smile of his, 
and then you slowly, steadily become an expert to the point where you had to check yourself before you wreck yourself to look <laughs> hard for the places where you still didn't know everything yet. So guess what happened to dear old dad? t Uh, no. Uh, so Sprout got him, uh, and he was like, Sprout was all like, you're, uh, trying to bring ponies together. You gotta go. And he shot him in the face. It's not true. It's just a lie. <laughs> he just dies off screen, like, in the intermittent time between the prologue and the n- now times. They oh, actually man. say, like, I believe they say that he died. Which is like a step above anything Friendship is Magic ever said. Yeah, it's like Netflix having less restrictions than uh, uh, whatever channel Friendship is Magic goes on. The unfortunate part about that is that Netflix hates to continue series for a long time. So Yeah. G6 in like five years. <laughs> At least I have that, she told herself. I know how to deal with the unknown. I can face this. Thanks, Dad. She got up and trotted over the fence near the cliff edge. She hooked her forehooves over it and stared up at the still darkening sky with its shimmering auroral lights. That was going to take some getting used to as well. The return of magic had given everything a subtle glow, a fringe of extra thereness, with Sunny, which Sunny could now sense. It had to be what Izzy called ponies, Sparkle, the magic reaching out along its own dimensions or wavelengths or whatever, connecting ponies to the land and the sky to each other. That was a lot to take in, even for the pony responsible for it all. This is what I wanted, she told herself firmly, to bring ponies together, to bring magic back, to have friends, good friends who were pegasi and unicorns, and so... At some point, she added an amusement. I'm just going to have to stop thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done here, and start dealing with it, because I want this to work. I'm going to have to make it work. I'm sure you will. Sunny looked up, surprised. Out of the auroral glow overhead, there was a swirling, shimmering flow of glittering light. It flowed downwards from the sky, swirled down and down, finally settling to the ground beside her. Amazed and a little nervous, Sunny turned to face it. So is uh, Luna or um, Celestia in this series? No, they're both dead. Okay, so they can die. I wonder how yeah, that happened. I mean, Twilight isn't even in the series. So, well, she technically is in the prologue, but... Yeah, but I mainly had to wor- wonder about um, uh, Luna and Celestia since they'd been alive for so long. Well, they gave their magic to Twilight, so I assume they just pissed off and fucking grew old and... Oh, they just, like, gave it to her? or something. Not even temporarily, but permanently? Pretty much, I guess. Well, I don't know how it really works, but I like to think that they're fucking dead now. And I wonder how Twilight died. Maybe it was only They weren't those in two. the uh, epilogue episode, so... Old people. Do they have any uh, returning characters? No. Wow. My hope is that Spike comes, because he is the only character that has been in every generation. <laughs> Um, nice. So I really want, like, a really old dragon spike. Named Quetzal. Named Spike. Uh, to be in here. But, you know. For all you Dragon Tales fans, you'll get that. Mm, I used to watch a lot of Dragon Tales. Like, a lot? Do you remember the, um... Remember. The, the Hispanic yellow dragon named Quetzal? Oh, that guy. Okay, yeah. yeah. I didn't remember his name. Wasn't he, like, a later addition to the show? Or is that someone else? Uh, I think that's someone, someone else. else. Pretty sure was, Ketzel was consistent. There was, like, that main cast of dragons. And then, along the line, there was some other fucker that just came in, and I was like, who the hell is this? Was that, like, a red dragon, though? Might have been. I wouldn't be surprised. It sounds like it. It became substantial, resolving into a pony-like shape, a pony with wings and a horn, just like Sunny's. But this pony also had a crown and a golden armored chest plate and shoes, and the mark on the crown and on the pony's flank. It was the same as the mark on Sunny's battered blue carryall, the same as the mark she'd seen on the upper pane of the stained glass doors in the old departure hall in Zephyr Heights. A doubled star. Sunny stared in awe at the face, smiling down at her. It was familiar. 
She'd said good night to it every night to this pony and her five friends, the old wooden toy sitting on the shelf beside her bed. Twilight Sparkle, Sunny gasped, her mouth hanging open. Twilight Sparkle. I really smiled. wish she didn't actually know the name Twilight Sparkle. I really wish she was like Twilight Francis. <laughs> like over the over the course of the ages, the name just gets weirdly yeah. mistranslated or whatever. So like a game of telephone. Yeah. That's basically what history is. Kind of is. Twilight smiled. A pony remembers me. I'm flattered. And then she paused as if recalling something. You know, it feels a little weird being on the other end of that remark. <laughs> Smiling, she sat down on the soft lawn before the ruined lighthouse. Sunny hurriedly did the same, facing her. At the same time, she reached into her blue carryall for her journal, the one with Twilight Star on its cover. Oh my gosh, Sunny said eagerly. I have, like, a gazillion questions. Why are you here? Is it part of the magic coming back? Where have you been all this time? Why did magic go away? What drove ponies apart like this? What happened back then? To her surprise, Twilight looked grimly ashamed. <sighs> I'm afraid I did. That I did. I'm afraid that I did. I'm afraid that I did. You? Sonny stared. How? I'm the princess of friendship, the lavender alicorn said. Or I was back then, and I like to think I was a very good one. I felt it was my duty to spread the magic of friendship far and wide to ponies and to other creatures as well. And with tons of patience and effort, I finally managed it. Ponies were at peace. There was no more needless fighting or even much bickering. We could devote our resources fully to learning and improving our skills and to making life better for every pony. We traded ideas and inventions, almost got, <coughs> well, almost got, what? almost more than food and gems, both amongst ourselves and with the other nations. It was, in a word, nice. 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 She shrugged gently. But, Sonny asked uneasily. I forgot. <laughs> Twilight answered. You know, I don't even remember anymore. I forgot what I was going to say. That was, I think, a reference to Sword Art Online. But it could only be a reference to Sword Art Online Abridged because that's the only one I've seen. But I think that's the line from Sword Art Online. You know, I don't even remember anymore. Not a good show. Anyways, that when ponies know nothing but peace and but peace and plenty, they start to take it for granted. They left all the hard work of friendship and the study of magic to me, the princess of friendship. And it and just got on with day to day living which isn't wrong in itself, except it meant they no longer understood the true source of friendship. <laughs> you can see the problem. Ponies themselves. Sonny nodded. Like we found out. But you mentioned other creatures, other nations. I've been wondering about that. I mean, the stories I've read about you and your friends. They mention all kinds of mythical creatures. Dragons, griffins, manacores, bugbears, changelings, even crystal ponies. But there aren't any other lands, any other creatures. Just the three cities where the three kinds of ponies live. Maritime Bay, Bridlewood, and Zephyr Heights. Twilight nodded. Yeah, fucking sucks. Equestria was a land magic as the magic fate. I'm pretty sure this voice has completely changed. Uh, but I like this. I like chill, sort of Twilight voice like this. She was like wearing sweatpants and uh, chilling out. Yeah, I got sunglasses on. <laughs> As the magic faded, most of it slipped away and disappeared, leaving just a bare remnant behind. Your three cities are all that's left of the pony lands, and in another generation or two, who knows? 
Even this much might have slipped away as well. Uh, your entire world might have simply disappeared, and you'd never even have noticed it. Sonny goggled. Goggled? That's the best word I've ever heard. Well, no, not more than burbled, but... <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that from another thing? That was from my Daybreaker. Man. All because we forgot about magic? But how could that happen? Sunny gestured to her own wings and horns. Oh, I don't know. Formed of magic itself. What? Uh, sorry, I was going to make a funny, a funny thing with Twilight, but I decided to stop like halfway through that. Because we're missing we're out on in... Ross's comedy. It's all Wizzy's fault. How could we forget about something as wonderful as this? I don't know. Maybe it's just because you're stupider than me. You ever think of that? <laughs> she probably is. She probably well, yeah. is stupider. Twilight, as dumb as she is, is pretty smart. <laughs> but all of the ponies together are like collectively like as smart as a piece of toast, so not much, <laughs> but because she's the like... smartest one on the football team, which is almost like being the tallest dwarf. <laughs> That's a reference to Heather's. Uh, yeah, I thought I heard that before. I don't know where, because I haven't seen Heather's, but I thought I heard that before. I might have oh, said that before. That's a possibility. Because, like friendship, Twilight said, Magic is hard. It takes patience and diligent work, even for some of the smallest effects. And after a while, ponies stopped seeing it as a pleasure and it felt it was more of a burden. They felt it was too difficult to be worth the time and there, and there were plenty of other distractions. She added wryly, I may have had something to do with that as well. As ponies' learning and technological skills improved, their need for everyday magic fell by the wayside. I love that show. Wayside? I have not read the books. Not yet. Wayside. Man, everyone's just talking about Wayside. Yeah, I was talking about Ray Wayside recently with uh, my brother. Huh. That's pretty cool. Nobody yeah. ever talks about Wayside. Yeah, it's coming back, man. Really? I guess that's not a surprise fell by the wayside. Why bother with a luminant spell when you could just flick a switch? That's a good point. <laughs> and why bother actually going to see and talk to some pony in person when you can just send them a text? You know, oh my that God. reminds me of... Uh, Twilight's becoming a uh, boomer. <laughs> um, yeah, this reminds me of Onward. The recent oh, Pixar yeah. movie. So, My Little Pony basically just stole from Onward. And of the two, I would say they're honestly kind of equal in quality, at least in terms Ooh. of writing. Uh, and that's not a bad thing because both are pretty good. Yeah, I liked Onward. Oh, yeah. what? Twilight eyed her. Ask your friend Pip. She's a natural. She sighed. And over time, ponies became too busy. Too preoccupied to maintain the open-mindedness and optimism that, and creativity that are so essential for magic. Frickin' Twilight over here being like r slash m14, and this is deep. And for friendship. Over time, it all just quietly slipped away. When you don't know, it's like having a real friend. It's so much easier to be swayed by an influencer or... Dem or demagogue. demagogue demagogue or even just an aggressive bully running a tea shop <gasps> is she calling out um rarity rarity doesn't run a tea shop oh i thought that carousel boutique served tea no i guess she just makes tea doesn't she yeah she makes tea for herself and others i guess guests you know, who is a tea no, shop she doesn't she doesn't run a tea shop. She, who well, has she does shop. spill some tea from time to time. <laughs> hey. You know what I mean. But like, but who gosh. has the tea shop? I don't know. Oh, tea bag over there was, or something. I thought she was referencing uh, a character when she said an aggressive bully running a tea shop. No, I think that's just like. Wait, it looks a, like it's a reference. 
a reference to IRL, I guess. Hmm. Like, Sonny no, Blinken. Rarity makes dresses. Sonny blinked in surprise. You saw that? Mm-hmm. Nice dance moves, by the way. Thanks. Sonny smiled. Oh, that was a tea shop. That's right, Alphabetal. I yes, knew I was... it was a reference. It was a reference to the movie. I didn't remember that part. I didn't <laughs> realize that he ran a tea shop. But when magic started disappearing, what did you do? At first, I didn't even notice it myself. Twilight looked sour. Uh, it happened gradually enough, but by the time I knew something was wrong, it was almost too late to act. And in my hurry to do so, I got it wrong. I thought if I could just bring the magic of the three tribes together and give it a tangible, visible focus, I, I could make it something to be proud of again, something ponies would want to learn about again. Together. Her horn glowed, and she waved a forehoof in the air before them. You know, it's great that after all this time, they're still speaking the Queen's English. (laughs) Uh, Relatability. A winged emerald, a spearhead sapphire, and a diamond lens. With another wave, they came together. The friendship gem. Twilight said with gay pride. Ah, Wizzy. Twilight said with a wry pride. Thank you. Gosh, it's my birthday month. I would be, I would appreciate if you didn't use that word around me. Ross, listen. Gay. <coughs> oh, gross. A combination of crystals infused with the essence of magic of all the three tribes. It's gleam and eternally symbolized the unification of pony magic and friendship. I brought it with me everywhere to make sure ponies knew what it represented. And? Twilight rolled her eyes. Oh my god, so many questions. <laughs> Fuck you, Sunny Star Scout. Jesus Christ. And it became more ven... Ven... Venera- venerated. Oh, it became one more venerated symbol. I'm assuming it's venerated. Much as I myself had become by that point. I was the princess of friendship, after all, but what did that have to do with the everyday concerns of ponies trying to make a living in an increasingly complex, busy, and divided world? Twilight shook her head. In the end, I was almost too late. The pony tribes were already fractured, isolated from one another. The other lands and realms were already vanishing away. The magic fate... I am... This isn't even, like the voice again (laughs) I think this was like the 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 other lands and realms were already vanishing away the magic fading so I did the only thing I could do I killed discord and made this (gasps) she did not well discord definitely ain't around otherwise he's alive just not with them I mean maybe but you know he they, exists they in a vortex outside magic. of time, drinking booze with uh, Fluttershy. He could be in his Discord realm. His Discord server? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So he does have a realm? Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. He's still uh, alive in my heart. So I did the only thing I could do. I killed Discord. I broke the gem back into its constituent parts, returned them to my closest friends at the time one pony from each of the three tribes after all my other friends had died and i charged them five bucks and i charged them with passing on what they knew of magic and friendship and with it the gemstones each one of them carrying on the tradition amongst each of their tribes three pony cities sunny nodded no offense but from what my friends and i saw it doesn't look like they did that great a job. Nope. Twilight shook her head sadly. Ah, uh, they tried. The Pegasus Princess passed on the gemstone, but not the learning and scholarship behind it. So it ended up a little more than a decoration for the royal crown. The unicorn artisan fell on hard times and lost the gem in a barbet. 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 
the scholar did somewhat better. He passed on his knowledge of history and even the diamond gem, so that it ultimately came down to you. Though, not the understanding of what it was, what it represented. Daddy. Daddy. Dad. Sonny got. Sonny gaped. He knew that gem was in my nightlight all along. He gave it to me when I was just a little filly. Why didn't he tell me what it was? Twilight looked ashamed. Because I told each of my friends not to. To pass on the gem to the most likely pony who... To the most likely pony they knew without saying what it was. Unless and until it became necessary to continue the tradition. Why? Twilight Look, I'm not the brightest bulb in the bed. <laughs> not the brightest bulb in the shed, I said. Really, it's your fault. <laughs> Twilight paused, trying to decide how to put it. There's an old saying, she said at last. A family's greatest treasure never enters through the front door. Can you tell me why? I'm li- I, I don't know. I've been thinking about it for the past, I don't know how many years. Can we get back on topic? <laughs> I don't care to school you on old sayings. Startled, Sonny thought about it. Because if it's that great a treasure, then it was there all along? Her eyes lit up. Oh, wait, because something that important never comes from the outside because it can't, because I boarded up the door. Twilight looked miffed. I'm almost offended by how fast you got that. Fucking fuck. Took me days to figure out when Princess Celestia hooked it to me. <laughs> Just to give her her homework to answer. Rolling her eyes, Twilight went on. Yes, the thing about friendship, true friendship, is that it can never be imposed from without. It has to come from within, from a, a real need for friends, the need to be with them and help them and yada yada yada, and also to feel safe among them. It's not something you can teach. It's only something you can show and encourage by being a friend. By creating what, that safe space for a pony. Within which true friendship can grow. Sunny looked over her shoulder at the ruined lighthouse. Hold on, hold that thought, Sunny. Within which true friendship can grow. <laughs> Sorry, I just said that wrong. Dad sure did that. He always said things wrong. <laughs> Dad sure did that. There wasn't a day living here that I didn't feel safe and loved. Now look at it. Ah, I'm sorry about that. Twilight agreed. It's okay. Whoopsie. Sonny said. My friends are going to help me rebuild it. And now that we have magic again, it should be a lot easier, right? No. Oh, man. Oh, no, it's going to be tough, man. You are in for a rough decade and a half. <laughs> Fifteen years of your life just down the drain. <laughs> now that you all have magic. Twilight nodded. Thanks to you and your friends. I'm glad you have them, by the way. Uh, glad you all found each other, and I couldn't be happier, Sonny. Uh, you turned things around. I was pretty certain, even at the end, that one day I'd be sitting here having this conversation with some pony. Uh, I just didn't know who it would be. And I'm so pleased that it was a woman. <laughs> I was really scared that it would be like, a man. We can't have a male main character. Like, come on. Listen, this, this show cannot deal with a stallion main character. It would implode. I mean, yes, technically, Hitch is a main character, yes. But he's not the main character. Exactly. The central character needs to be female. No, um, and I'm so pleased that it was you. A bright, scholarly pony with loads of optimism. You remind me a lot of me, actually, when I was closer to your age. Sunny stared up at her, at her wings and her horn. We're not related somehow, are we? That'd be awkward. Twilight smiled and reached a forehoof to stroke Sonny's mane. Welcome home, daughter. That's what I would have done. Uh, <laughs> that's not what Twilight does. 
Only in the way that a beloved story deserves to be retold every now and again. Oh, thank God. Because I really dig you. <laughs> then she looked hey. uncomfortable. <laughs> Didn't even realize that she was going to say that afterward. <laughs> uh, just don't talk to me about a heart swarming tale. Terrible story. Just the worst. Once <gasps> ponies found out how much I liked it, I had an issue with an edict. Edict? Whatever. Addict? Edict. Having new productions of it banned. I mean, they were having hoof fights over who deserved the award for best catering. Ugh. Sunny laughed. She might be talking to a princess, the princess of friendship herself. Yet, it felt completely uncom- It felt completely comfortable, much like talking to a very old friend. Some pony that she knew and understood very well. So... Hey, what's, what's heart swarming? I'm gonna blow this place up now. <laughs> oh my god. So, what should we do now? Sunny asked. You wanna go get some food? Grab a cup of coffee? Hell yeah, dude. I love that shit. And what should I do with these? She gestured. She gestured to her own ethereal horn and wings. Twilight shook her head. It's not for <clears throat> me to say anymore. God, even even if parts of the old world return, this is your world now. What do you do with it is up to you and your friends. Smiling, she stood up. Sunny quickly did likewise, looking wistful. I was trying to push your problems onto me. <laughs> Are you leaving again so soon? Don't worry, Twilight said. I'm never very far away. But why did you come back at all? Just to answer my questions? In part, Twilight said. But also, because it has been said that I will never outlive my friends. So I do need to keep making new ones. It's good to know you, Sonny. But how will we find you again? Will you at least be around in case we need advice? Twilight smirked and gestured with a forehoof at the journal still clutched in Sunny Hoof's hoof. What the? <laughs> at the journal still clutched in Sunny's hoof. What do you think? Sunny glanced down at the journal, at the golden double star in its leather cover. Then she looked up again. At empty air, looking up at the aurora-streaked night sky, Sunny thought she saw a whirling of brilliant sparks fading back into the overall glow, but she couldn't be sure. And then a voice called out to her, up the path, leading down towards the road. Funny. It was Izzy, the purple unicorn, dancing along at the head of a crowd of ponies, some of whom were tugging wagons loaded with boards and paint and other supplies. Izzy raced up and hugged Sunny tightly. The unicorn's bright blue mane was still f but all but fizzing with excitement. Did you have a good long think while we were away? What did you think about? Was it us? Did you miss us? If so, you don't have to miss us anymore because we're all right here again. And so they were. Sheriff Hitch, the Pegasus Princess sister Zip and Pip, and also, it seemed, most of Maritime Bay. The town's ponies stared in awe at Sunny, mostly at the horn and wings, seemingly formed from magic itself. Seems like, Hitch said coolly. No, that sounds How did you like know... Him. That hitch sounded like that. Does he? No. Okay, I was, I was going to change the voice anyway, because that just sounded too much like the other one. Uh, Seems like... How hitch did you know cool. that hitch sounded like that? <laughs> you know, he seems very uh, falsetto. Yeah. James Marsden, that's who plays hitch, I just remembered. James Marsden? Yeah. Chester McBadbat? Maybe. Wait, James, Jason Marsden or James Marsden? James Marsden. Hold on. Because he's going to get a bit of a shock when he finds out. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was thinking of Jason Marsden. Oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, Jason Marsden's awesome. Uh, oh, I don't know no. James Marsden. He's in um, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which was oh. good. I might watch it. 
Um, and he was also in Hop, I think. Or was it the other one? Hmm. I think it was Hop. Uh, and then he was also in X-Men as Cyclops. Oh. Like the three movies. And, and, and the third one, where, where he dies, like five minutes in. Yeah, and... wow, yeah. Great, thanks for killing the leader, guys. Spoilers for X-Men 3, but fuck that movie. Seems like, Hitch said coolly, having heard about what happened in bits and pieces from each of us, every pony wanted to come up here and get the whole story from the pony's mouth, so to speak. Amazed, Sunny stared around at the wide-eyed crowd, waiting breathlessly for her to speak. Then, remembering what Twilight had told her, she made a point of motioning for her four friends to gather close around her. Let them eat cake. I, I, I don't know well, she said to the crowd with a wide grin, let us all tell you all about it. The end. My Little Pony and New Generations, its characters in Indicia are the property of Hasbro. No infringement is intended. The story is a work of fan fiction written by fans for fans for the series. Tell me more. Nope, there's no... Okay, fine. Join our subscriber star to remove these adverts. 6,458 <laughs> views. 511 upvotes. And that upvotes. was When Magic Returns by Let's Do This. 69 stories. Oh. Nice. I really dug that one. Yeah, that was nice. It seems like uh, the two stories were from like before the beginning of the movie and after the end of the movie. Yeah, that, that worked out perfectly, honestly. Yeah. So now you have this big hole that, that you need to fill in. <laughs> you and intentionally did this to me there is a sequel which ironically we could just read the entire thing for the rest of this month because uh it's got three chapters one is four thousand one is five thousand one one is also five thousand. Oh wow so if we if if i just can't find any other stories maybe that's a maybe that's a that's an option hmm. it's both comedy and drama so it works for all of them but until then I don't think we're going to do that, by the way. Yeah, uh, probably not. But my point is, we could still do that sometime. Uh, yeah, I like this one. Yeah, this one was nice. Um, I'm sad that uh, none of the original characters return to the Milo Pony Gen 5. Technically, they do in the really? opening. <gasps> and then Rarity becomes evil. It's the whole thing. What, what the frick? It's Are you just trying to get me thing, to watch Lizzie. it by lying? Yes. Actually, no, that's not a lie. <laughs> it's, um, I don't mind that at all. It's a new generation. Kill them off. People die. Kill those fuckers. <laughs> they they shouldn't have to live to see the the their whole freaking jobs completely demolished and the freaking the goal like split apart. And all the tribes are now in different places. That's what they sh they shouldn't they shouldn't have to live through that. It's terrible. You read Forever Young. You should understand this. I did read Forever Young. I want to be. Anyways, uh, the point is. Yeah, but I still want characters like Discord to return though. Yeah, Discord. I I don't want Discord to live very long without Fluttershy though. <laughs> Uh, he can have a replacement of Fluttershy called um, Butterfly. So just a rebound girl? <laughs> yeah. Maybe even a rebound clone of Fluttershy? Like, you know, I, I tried, tried to something... create Fluttershy, but it didn't turn out very well. All right. Hello, I like death and destruction. You see? My name's Butterfly. Give me your wallet. I, I tried to make her better by making her not have to eat or drink, but she still eats and drinks, just not food. Death to the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, maybe, but I think John Delancey doesn't want to come back. I think he's like, you know what? Gen 4 perfection. But yeah, one character I do hope comes back is Spike. Let's see. Spike one. and... He's played by um, Ron Perlman. Spike played by Ron Perlman. 
Big boy Spike, played by Ron Perlman, would be amazing. He is, like, really serious now. I want that to happen. <laughs> I want that to happen so bad, and since it seems like they might just be going in a bit serious of a direction, not, like, too serious, it's to, like, for kids comedy, you know? I, I want that to happen, is the point I'm trying to make here. Before there was time, before there was anything, there were monsters. Wait, before there was anything, there was nothing. And before there was nothing, there were monsters. Monsters? I will command a great and terrible army. Sorry, that's Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman from what? Adventure Time. Ah, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Because that could have also been Ron Perlman from, like, I don't know, Hellboy. Mm, I mean, that wouldn't that. have made sense because he played Hellboy in that, but, you know, he could have played, like, another character who said that. Or something. <laughs> could have even been from, like, Teen Titans. All right, I think we've wrapped everything up. So that uh, that's it, everybody. I expected this to be short. Honest to God. That's why I had the quiz. I think it's <laughs> I like, probably going to end up being be... under an hour. Maybe. Oh, yeah, probably. I think there's enough to cut, but no offense. Uh, there's enough to cut, but, you know. Anyways, thank y'all for listening in. Um, please support us by, I don't know, telling your friends about this fantastic podcast. Like, oh my god, it's the best podcast I've ever seen. Uh, you can check Tweet us out about anywhere us. you find our, anywhere you find your podcasts. Post and about YouTube. us. Hmm? Talk about us on Instagram. Yeah, 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 do that. Uh, you can also, uh, we also have Twitters at Ross Pitt Shark and at Wizzy underscore Puff and also uh, I don't mean to brag but I'm awesome he uh, is awesome I forgot what I was going to say after also that's right uh, go down into the description and give these stories likes uh, and just like kind of kind of I don't know click on the chapters and then just go wee down through them because I forgot to tell you to you all to go check them out earlier because uh, we don't like stealing from these authors stealing views from these authors not like money i'm fine with stealing money from them just not the views so uh yeah point is go check that out babies and uh yeah later i guess bye nor stood next to another pony to compare not since Gee, another unicorn to compare. Oh, did I say pony? Yep. Man.